Hi guys. Tonight we are attending the discussion of the feasibility of building an oil refinery in Guyana. And today's discussion was conducted by the Ministry of Natural Resources and the featured uh, speaker was uh, Mr. Hess who is an oil industry uh, professional uh, from Mexico. Oh, this is my, this is my, this is my day. I'm ready to take it on, come what may. Refineries that have been built in the area in the, that are comparable in terms of uh, scale and uh, complexity. And we tried to see whether by crossing those uh, information we could get uh, an, an approximation to a number that sounded reasonable. So the first thing we did, which is important for Guyana, is to look at evaluation of the crude oil streams. Now this is something important not only for uh, the downstream potential investments, but also for the upstream and for uh, the fiscal regime. I mean, after all, the significant uh, wealth that is going to accrue to Guyana as a result of its uh, natural resource endowment is going to be dependent on the price that uh, that commodity fetches in the international market and how much of that value accrues to go down. Now, it, it's a relatively straightforward, uh, microeconomically based calculation that essentially uh, says that if you export a particular crude or commodity stream, it could be copper or nickel or whatever, but in this case we're talking about crude oil, what you would try to do is to assess the value of that molecule back to the point where it was produced. Now, the value of the uh, Doyamese molecule is not going to be valued in Guyana, it's going to be valued in its destination market. I arrived from Nigeria, like Louisiana Sweet, uh, and uh, Red. And we came to a Guyana food net back for the period that we are discussing here of about you know, 46, 50. Uh, now, obviously, this is a number that is going to vary on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on the prices in the market, which fluctuate, you know, every single minute. For the economic size of the refinery trade has increased uh, to about 200,000 barrels a day more or less. If you have to build a new refinery frame anywhere in the world, you would build a $200,000 a day refinery. Now, the problem with a $200,000 a day refinery in Guyana is that it is way above the 13 to 14,000 barrels a day that uh, the country requires, and it's a massive investment. And so we looked at what an economic size would be that would make sense in the case of Guyana. You can't bring it down more than that because then it becomes uneconomic in terms of the cost of the offsites and all the ancillary investments that you have to do to make a refinery viable. And so we said, okay, let's assume that it's 100,000 barrels a day capacity. Thank you. 
then we have to assess the construction cost and the final. Now, construction costs have been uh, a very complicated issue in the oil industry because historically, for many, many years, refinery construction costs were in the neighborhood. I mean, it was a rule of thumb that you know, if you ask how much does the refinery cost to build, people would say, well, ten thousand dollars per barrel. Then the numbers changed and rose to somewhere between around 20,000, and uh, we would argue today that they would be in the neighborhood of 25,000. Now, the results that this analysis gives us are the following. Uh, the base gauge give us, gives us a negative rate of return. And uh, net present value of negative three billion dollars. Now that is a very significant number because if you remember, the total investment is five billion. That means that you're destroying over half the value of your investment the day you commission your refinery. Essentially, what he said is that there will be a three point six billion dollar loss in investing in an oil refinery in Guyana. But uh, I also like to hear you to hear from some of the other uh, Guyanese who have views to express on this issue. So, so guys, I want you to meet uh, Rogenja Brisesar, and he is a Guyanese national who was a personal assistant to the former president of Guyana. He was also a member of the coalition coming from the Alliance for Change uh, political party and he's currently a commissioner on the PUC, the Public Utilities Commission. And what we want to hear is his assessment of this meeting and uh, what were some of the issues he raised and uh, we'll find out whether in fact he got answers to the questions he raised. So over to you, Zendra. My first um, comment is that I would have expected uh, the gentleman to talk about, okay, if you were to purchase the crude and you were to refine it, what, what would be the gain from the actual process of, of um, converting the crude into gasoline and, and all the products? So he didn't cover that. So it would not tell me whether, in fact, a refinery per se would be profitable in that sense. Secondly, I asked him the question because from my information, Hartree was before HESCO operation, and HESCO operation was departed to Exxon. So I raised the question whether there would some, be some conflict of interest there. He explained to me that they branched off from HES some time ago, and they just act in advisory capacity, etc. But I'm wondering how far can the chip fall from the block? Thirdly, I made the point that we seek advice from these multinational, these big, huge international cooperation that are linked. And I'm a bit skeptical sometimes in listening to what they have to say because sometimes they believe that we in the third world or we in Guyana and these countries don't really know of the, the thinkers that are necessary to understand the processes. And I, I, I really disagree with him. In terms of him talking about skilled labor requirement, the fact is places like Singapore, places like Thailand, uh, places like Dubai, all these places, they have a huge influx of skilled labor, migrant skilled labor, working in the industry, they work and they go back home. Even America, look at America. America is dependent upon skilled labor coming from the third world countries. Six, about 80% of our graduates in Guyana actually service um, the American economy in some way or the other. So I don't buy that at all. You can buy the skills you require. I asked about the assay and the API of the crew that we found here. And I did send a message to Mr. Trotman to find out whether that will be state secret. Because the API will tell us whether the crew is sweet or sour, or whether it's heavy or light, and that will determine the kind of refinery you're going to build. And the assay will be a breakdown of the component of the crude. That will determine the price because it tells you what you can extract actually, what you can obtain 
from the crude. I didn't get those answers. With regard to the market, he keeps saying that Guyana market is 13, 13 um, thousand barrels a day of consumption. My point is all the producers of um, refined gasoline and so on produce way above their, their local need, they export. And the fact also he might have ignored is that we are part of CARICOM. So our market is wider than Guyana, it, it's inclusive of CARICOM. We have relationship with Cuba, we have relationship with Dominica, so those markets are potential markets too. The cost of transportation obviously will be less. Now I don't have a problem, I think his conclusion is that the, the government should not be investing in such a huge project and I, I tend to want to agree with him. Maybe, but I don't agree with him when he suggests maybe even the private sector people that it will not be profitable really to put a refinery in Guyana. I know of a, of a company that has been working on a refinery and is trying to get the support of the government and they promised the support after this gentleman would have delivered his, um, his verdict. This gentleman already have um, an environmental permit to build a refinery in the Crab Island area. He had an MOU with the government and he's seeking financing. Now, you know, financing of that nature will not take the kind of short, will not be short term. With regard to the pricing that he claimed for the refinery, I disagree with him. I'm not an expert, but I've been talking to people. And from what I've been talking to people and other experts is that one can build a 60,000 barrel crude um, refinery here for about $800 million. Um, the production from Exxon will be about 120,000 barrels a day. Um, two of those units consisting of four modules will, will be able to process 120,000 barrels. I want to probably build it at about 1.8, less than 1.8 billion US dollars. So a number of points he's making there seem to my mind seems to be trying to dissuade Guyanese from making that, enter into that venture. And I've been talking to a couple of people right here, Mr. Durga, he's interested. We have a number of proposals from private sector people locally and internationally who are interested. And I'm positive, with support from the government, um, the private sector can get involved. And to my mind, the financing, if you take 100,000 persons in the diaspora alone at $7,000 per person, you're looking at $700,000, which can actually build a 60,000 barrel refinery. Okay. And we All have right. millionaires Guyanese overseas. All right, so that was uh, Rajendra Bisesar and uh, coming to you live from Marion Academy in Georgetown, Guyana. You want to see more content like this? Click like and subscribe and we'll bring you in New York, in Toronto, in London, all of the issues from the point of view of Guyanese right here in Guyana. Later!